Welcome to another day in the matrix, waters above crypto. I wanted to start this off by thanking everyone who commented in yesterday's video and sharing your first red pill moments with everyone. I read every single red pill moment you guys shared and it was so great to see all the enlightened beings in this community. You're all here for a reason. So today we'll be looking at the XRP and Bitcoin charts to follow up on this price action as we lead into the monthly close, which will be happening tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time Zone. We'll discuss some scenarios that could happen over this weekend for the entire cryptocurrency space as Bitcoin has seemed to bounce off of the 59% dominance level and XRP has seemed to get a little bit of juice. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with the esoteric science of gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. If you haven't already subscribed and you like what we're doing here, feel free to subscribe. Give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious people to help grow this community. And for those of you who want to learn how to do technical analysis and to combine it with gematria, you can join my mastermind course. There's a promo code in the pinned comment below with instructions to get lifetime access to the course with a discount. My email's in the description box to get in contact with me for access to the course. Also, for anyone who's been waiting to join the Patreon tomorrow, on May 1st, I appreciate all of your support. After signing up, you'll be instantly given access to last week's Red Pill episode number four which was an epic one hour long, by the way. <laughs> and in that, we went over seven different cryptocurrency projects in depth. And by signing up and becoming a Patreon supporter, you'll also qualify for a discount on the Mastermind course. And um, it's been an amazing month for this channel, so it's just my way of giving back. I'm so grateful to see how the rest of this um, next month will go see what May has in store for us. So with that being said, let's take the red pill. So the first thing I want to get into is this DXY. So the dollar index is pumping today. It's at 60.68% uh, up. Let's just call it 0.7%. This is a massive move for the DXY. This is something that we haven't seen in a, a little bit of time, maybe almost a full month. And um, if you guys remember me tracking this chart, it looks super messy, but it's because this is like one of the ugliest charts ever. The dollar index got a rejection around the end of March and has been on a really steady decline up until yesterday. And this could be a little pivot point that we're seeing right now, a little bit of a pivot in the trend. And because it's broken um, onto new highs since this pivot, it would make sense that, you know, after having about three weeks to the downside, the dollar index cools off a little bit and you're seeing the stock market reflect. But what you're not seeing and the reason why I brought this up to start the video is because Bitcoin and all the cryptos are up right now. Typically, when the dollar index is having a massive green candle um, like it's getting today the cryptos are down. So I'm sort of looking at this all like a big shakeout, like perhaps what we're seeing right now in these cryptocurrencies is to fake people out. And um, that's kind of what happens when you approach this 786, 618 territory that we're seeing right here that I've been bringing up time and time again in these videos. So people have been uh, commenting and reaching out and being like, the price keeps going up, what's going on? And I told everyone, hey, you can make it all the way up to this 786, get rejected, and come straight back down to the bottom of the trading range. So you have to be um, calm, first of all, and uh, just anticipate that this could pump up as high as 61,000, and that would be totally normal. It's happened back here, right back here. When Bitcoin went to 42,000, got rejected, and then came all the way up into this golden pocket, it even peaked above it, and then made a new lower low. It's very normal here again this move from right here down to here got into that uh, territory and then came back down had a little bit of a backup phase those backup phases are where you want to accumulate by the way so that's why I've been harping on this whole 786618 golden pocket uh, deal because it's just it's paramount it's really important to be considerate of this in cryptocurrency you can make extremely fast sell-offs and extremely fast buybacks 
and then still have these double bottom or um, W breakout scenarios like this. So until we close dailies above this 786, we're just kind of chopping around. This is par for the course. This has been going on the entire year, all the way since back in the beginning of the year. Bitcoin has been making this whole market chop before it reaches new highs. And one other thing that's a little more unique at this time is the fact that Bitcoin dominance is it's down. It's at 49.95. So this is just a relief rally for the alts. All the altcoins had a really sharp sell-off last week. If you remember, Bitcoin was down from all-time high all the way down about 27%. But we saw some plays like uh, VeChain, for instance, coming down off of its highs a massive amount, 53%. So that was pretty crazy to see how quickly that got bought all back up. It seemed like April 23rd was a ritual day as dates with 23, 22, and 24 tend to be. Very ritual numbers for those of you that have been following this work. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's just get back into the Bitcoin chart really quickly and see what could be going on as we lead into this next daily close. So the one thing, we're not in the golden pocket yet, so it's all good. I'm just going to hide that. And I'm going to bring up some of the indicators. So the first thing that I've been talking about a lot when it comes to these EMAs is this cross of this white EMA with the white, sorry, the yellow EMA with the white EMA, which is the eight and the five, uh, the 55 exponential moving average. Sorry, my mind's all over the place right now. The eight EMA and the 55 EMA. And this cross we haven't actually seen since all the way back here. And I've been talking about this moment in, in um, August and into September. And if you remember, look at what happens. Breakout sharp rejection, come back up, and then we made this new high, slid down into it, tried to make a re, you know, tried to regain a new high and then failed and had this sharp sell off. And then boom, we get this cross of the yellow and the white EMAs, the eight and the 55. And then we chopped sideways and right when it crossed bullish, blast off. One of the biggest runs up we've seen in Bitcoin since uh, 2016. And that's, a, that's amazing for an asset that went from, you know, a penny to 60,000. So for it to move from 10K uh, right back here, around 10K all the way up to 42K, that was pretty big for Bitcoin with such a large market cap. And then you could see this 55 has held support perfectly up until recently where we had this cross. So now you can see this yellow EMA, the eight exponential moving average, is giving it nice support. Something to be considerate of, how these things become support to keep it sideways. It's really nice to see, and as you can see, this moving average is now jutting to the upside. So what that tells me is MACD on the daily is about to cross. And when that MACD crosses bullish, this whole market could just set to new highs next week. You never know. So <clears throat> here's one thing that I wanted to, dis to discuss about XRP and why I'm just going to interject into XRP. Back here when the price was sitting around 40 cents and blasted up, people started taking profits. I've, I have a lot of people that have said they sold all their XRP, right? And now the price has come back down. They didn't buy when it, when it dipped. And now they're up here wondering what to do. And this is insane to me because so many XRP army people who are, you know, diamond hands, they're selling everything when it goes up, and then when it comes back down, they're not rebuying back in, and now they're waiting for it to dip again, and they're trying to get fancy. They love giving the tax man that 22% capital gains tax on something that they're apparently bullish on. So let's clear the, the air here. Um, it's very important to know that the market could do three things. It could go up, it could go down, or it could go sideways. So when it comes to technical analysis, I'm not telling anyone my opinion on the fundamentals. I'm not telling anyone my opinion on um, the fact that this is a banker coin. I don't care about any of that. The only thing I'm here to do is give the red pill and show you the chart, which has nothing to do with my emotion or my opinion. So what I'm seeing here right now is a potential bullish cross in the MACD incoming. But what I'm also seeing is this chart in and of itself is very ugly. So the reason for that being brought up is because this can taper down 
at any moment. This can blast up at any moment. It's so hard when it comes to a very sporadic and volatile asset like XRP because XRP is mostly in the hands of retail and that's not good because retail investors have the weakest hands. So whenever these extreme sell-offs come, it's ripple dumping on you, <laughs> and then people get scared and sell. And it brings these big death candles like this 41% right here. So the same thing goes to the upside. If everyone wanted XRP to go up right now, everyone should buy $100 of XRP and don't even give a shit about the price, okay? Don't wait for dips, just keep buying every single day. Don't worry about the price. That's how you really know you love a project. When you buy Bitcoin at $65,000, it's because you believe in it. When you buy XRP at $1.96, it's because you believe in it. You believe in a project so you continue to invest because you understand in the long term it has upside. That's all we got to say. So to get back to the technicals on Bitcoin before we move on to XRP, Keep in mind that if we get this daily close above this 55, this could give some juice to get it all the way up to 61,000. It's very possible. And then I would anticipate we get resistance at 61 because of this right back here around May, uh, March 14th. Then this right here leading up into uh, the 12th of April. And then that right there gives me enough feeling that this move between right here, 58.6, and this 61 could happen in the course of a couple hours. And then it's all about how that tests. We don't know what could happen, guys. I'm sure everyone didn't anticipate last week's uh, weekly um, close for the stock market leading to one of the biggest, fastest sell-offs we've seen in the altcoins since this whole bull run. Um, I believe it was the 23rd. It was insane to watch. I remember on Friday night last week, exactly one week ago, I watched VeChain hit a new high. It hit a, it, it like barely came within a new high and then got brought down so quickly and bought back up so quickly. My mind was like, what did I just watch? It blew me away. And I've seen a lot in this market. So to see something like that happen, it just reeked of manipulation. And that's the kind of stuff that you have to um, just kind of come to terms with when it comes to Bitcoin and, and all these altcoins is they're, they're not like stocks. They're very different. They behave like children because they are basically the age of a child when it comes to the rest of all the asset classes. It's a very immature asset class. And the most maturity we have in this space, unfortunately, for a lot of people, because a lot of people don't want to um, you know, take this um, seriously, with a logical position would be Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the most mature asset, hence it's losing its volatility and it's behaving more like gold. And it was designed to do such, so it's just fulfilling its purpose. All these cryptos have a different purpose to fulfill. So if you don't like Bitcoin for whatever reason, that's perfectly fine. But when it comes to protecting wealth, it's gonna be very difficult with the altcoins because the altcoins can lose 80 to 90% of their value in a bear market. Again, we've seen it happen. Not an opinion. So tonight's monthly close I'm a little worried about in regards to Bitcoin due to this potential doji that could happen, but I don't think it'll happen um, because it would have to be bought up all the way to 58,000. Again, a doji is an indecision candle, so that means it could go either way. And then this uh, weekly that we'll be seeing in a couple days looks like it has some juice to become a bullish engulfing candle. So the body of the candle will be slightly higher um, and a green candle versus this red candle. So it's an engulfing candle that's bullish and that's a continuation sign. So yep, this is really like a make or break at this time when it comes to Bitcoin and how it will affect all the other altcoins. Let's finish up on XRP. So the one thing that'll be really nice for this monthly candle is the fact that it's the highest monthly candle close for XRP since all the way back in December 2017, right before it hit its all-time high. So that's very good. It's looking very good. Another thing is this weekly close will be a bullish engulfing candle, and it will also be potentially within this golden pocket range, which would be good because that shows a strength to the upside. 
So the weekend time for XRP is typically the most volatile. If you guys remember right back here, um, Jan or the beginning of February, there was that pump and dump coordination. Well, the weekend before that, it was pumping up massively and like no one had a reason why. And then they came out with this bullshit talking about a pump and dump group because of all the stuff that was going on with Wall Street bets. Now, it was moving up naturally there. And, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to get into that. But as it was making that move up, it just had this massive, you know, candle to the upside and then correction, which looks exactly like this candle right here. If you look at the way that that structure is right here on this candle of April 12th on the weekly, that's not good. That means that there was a lot of sell pressure once we reached that $1.96, and that's a sign of weak hands. That tells you that XRP holders are not as committed as they want to seem they are, okay? Because this shit shouldn't have had such a small body. It should have been a much more healthy um, level held on the upside, but instead it wasn't. This is sensible. This is clearing out a lot of uh, manipulation. This right here is showing you weakness of hands. And this right here is from further altcoin manipulation, most likely from leverage shorts and from options expiry on Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum, which led to all the alts getting drained. And this is a sign of strength. So overall, we're recovering. And this weekly close being at this level would be a sign that uh, XRP is ready for those $2 to $3 levels, what we've all been waiting for. Let's get on the daily chart, see what's going on. So again, we're going to be uh, paying close attention to this golden pocket, the 786 between 154 and 172. Got to keep your eyes on that because if we get a daily close within this tonight, we could be trading in this 786 for a hot minute. And then um, we'll have to see how it holds. But I've seen time and time again, all the way up to the 786 rejection, play in this uh, golden pocket, and then still fall back. And then please note that when you're using these Fibonacci's, the most crucial level to hold for support is the 236. That's what uh, all cryptos like to do. So what that means is, if we get a sharp rejection, it's most likely supported by the 236, which in XRP, you could just call it the $1.11 price target, the 111. And let's see if there's any EMAs that could align with that. No, not really. Let's see on the weekly. Definitely not. Oh, yeah. So you could see on the weekly chart, I'm going to hide all the drungs just to show you guys something that comes back to what I was saying before. Look at all these moving averages sitting at not even a dollar yet. Okay, so these moving averages need to need to catch up. What happens with XRP is it tends to break high above its moving averages, and then it'll just stay there for a, for a moment and then crater down. So uh, it would be really great to see, especially this 21 EMA, to start approaching the $1 range. And what that means is trading at this 150 level, 140 level should be welcomed for XRP holders. More strength needs to be built in this area, and these moving averages need to start moving up. And uh, But the one thing that's really nice is the moving averages are all perfectly in alignment, meaning we have the 8 on top, followed by the 13, followed by the 21, the 34, and the 55. That's really healthy. Let's look at the daily. You see that we have a discrepancy here where the 13 is above the 21 and the 8, so this is a sign that, you know, this moved up a little too fast and it could fall back down just as fast. So keep an eye on that. That is something that I wanted to also bring up with Bitcoin. You notice how the moving averages are in reverse. You have the 55, 34, 21, 13, and 8. They're flipped. So that's a sign that we're not quite there yet. And the odds are this market could go a little higher, but it's, it's, it's going to chop. So overall... These cryptos are looking great right now. The only red flag I see is the fact that the DXY dollar index is pumping and the cryptos are also pumping. This gives me a gut feeling that the weekend is going to bring red, lots of selling pressure. I'm just saying that based on experience um, and I'm saying that based on my intuition. Again, that's not technical analysis. That's, that's me giving you a feeling that I have. And then the CMEs are another thing to consider. CME closure coming in soon, and I remember there being a massive gap on the um, 
sorry, right here, boom. Okay, so you see where the CME got rejected, around where it got rejected is this huge gap territory. I'm not a huge believer in the gaps. I could really give a shit less, but they do play out typically, especially when there's upside gaps. Again, we're in a bull market, so there's upside. So I would not be surprised if Bitcoin's, if the CME chart could fill that 61, like I was telling you earlier, a move all the way up to fill that 61 level, which would be confluent with the CMEs. So again, we have multiple things that we could come back to that make this technical analysis more concrete. And um, then I do think that um, there would be still potential for pullback after filling up this gap. We just have to see. Next week is probably going to be a make or break when it comes to letting us know what this market wants to do next. But this weekend, I believe, is just going to be another one of those weekends where anything goes. It could be a massive red weekend like we saw last weekend, or it could just be chill. It, we, we look to volume when it comes to how the weekends go. Typically, there's very low volume. But last weekend, we got a huge volume spike, just something to be considerate of. So I'm going to end that here. This video was pretty long. Gave you guys lots of information moving into this potential um, bullish weekly close. And of course, a very bullish monthly close, especially for XRP. And I'll be doing the Red Pill episode this weekend. Hopefully I'll be doing it this weekend. If not, I'll be doing it on Monday. For anyone who's looking to join the Patreon tomorrow, starting... May 1st. I greatly appreciate your support. You guys are incredible. You'll have access immediately to the Red Pill episodes. And um, with that being said, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day in the Matrix and much love.